Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. It occurs to me, in looking at the reference station, that we've talked about the antenna that was uh, chosen for the reference station, the MFJ 2010. And I also talked about several other antennas that I looked at, but I've never kind of brought all that together into one video where all five of those wire antennas are presented. So I thought that's what we'd do tonight. In choosing an antenna for the reference station, I looked at five different options, all of which are wire antennas. Why wire antennas? Because they're cheap. Now, I know that they, you may not have room for a wire antenna. You might end up having to go with the vertical, but verticals are many times more expensive than these wire antennas. The first one I considered was just flat, a homemade 40 meter dipole. I made one, I tested it, I did a video about it, I still have it, it works just fine. The next was the MFJ 2010 off-center fed dipole, fed at the one-third point. And this is the one I actually chose because it covered both 40 and 20 fully. The next was the MFJ 17754, which covers 40, 20, 10, and... Oops, that's not right. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Let's fix that. The next was the MFJ 40 and 20 trapped dipole, uh, the MFJ 17754. Next is the Alpha Delta DXEE, which covers 40, 20, 15, and 10, and it's a combination of a trapped and a fan dipole. And then the last one was the My Antennas 80 through 6 and fed dipole, which I found actually to be quite an impressive antenna, though a bit pricey. Let's take a look at them one at a time. A homemade dipole, 66 feet long, so it's a little bit big. Uh, it uses uh, electric fence insulators, which you can get at a, you know, like uh, the tractor store or Murdoch's or someplace like that for very little money. They're very cheap. And you can get several of them for just a few dollars. And the electric fence insulators work fine. And then use just plain old house wiring, THHN 14 gauge wire. You can purchase from Home Depot just single stranded wire. And you can buy it in pretty short uh, segments if you want to. Or you could just use something that you have as scrap. Uh, you do need an SO239 connector, or else you can connect the dipole directly to it. But uh, I would recommend the use of the connector. Those connectors are about $4. So the advantages here are th th this is by far the lowest cost if you have most of the materials, especially the wire, already on hand. It covers the entire 40 meter band, and as a, a kind of a well-kept secret, it will also cover the 15 meter band. Uh, you can easily make other dipoles for other bands, and you could make this into a fan dipole if you want it. The, the disadvantage is, is that it is a single band antenna, and it is 66 feet long, so you've got to have a, a fairly large uh, place to put it. The next antenna I looked at was the MFJ 2010 off-center fed dipole. This is a 40 meter dipole fed off center at the one third point. It's $70, uh, $69.95, something like that. This is the one I chose as the reference station dipole. Being an off center fed dipole, it does not have problems with traps uh, getting to be high Q. So this antenna does cover the entire 40 and 20 meter bands. Now as a bonus, covers 10 and six. Uh, each of them partly, but uh, enough that you could do something with it. But 40 and 20 are the two bands that are going to be most important for the next two to three years until the sunspots really start to build up and we can go to the higher bands. Now this antenna comes with a built-in ballon. Two of them actually. One is a choke ballon and the other is a four-to-one ballon uh, that matches it at that one-third point. The only disadvantage really to this antenna is that it is 66 feet long and uh, that can be a little bit hard to cram into the backyard if you don't have a fair amount of room. 
I know some people who actually, <laughs> I know one fellow whose 80 meter dipole goes to the tree out uh, by the street over the sidewalk. Uh, but uh, uh, you can get very creative in how you route these antennas. Now we look at the MFJ17754 trapped dipole. This is a classic trapped dipole for 20 and 40. It again is $70. It covers all of 20, but only part of 40. And that is um, a problem because you can't cover the digital part and the general band, uh, the general part of the single sideband uh, with the same settings on the antennas. Now this does have an advantage. It's only 42 feet long. So it can fit in a smaller space. Uh, one of the disadvantages for this dipole is it will require significant tuning to put the antenna into both bands. I found that the antenna was deliberately built long so that you would have to shorten it. Um, and uh, I did that. I did not discover that. It's not in the instructions, but it is in an errata sheet that for some reason does not ship with the dipole, uh, when I asked MFJ for their build instructions, because I couldn't get it to work, I asked them for the build instructions and discovered it was deliberately made long so that you could tune it down to just where you wanted it. But you will have to do that. You can't just put it up. It's not plug and play. Uh, and it only covers about half of the 40 meter band. Uh, but if uh, size is important to you, this may be what you do. Now, I turn to another manufacturer here, Alpha Delta, who makes lightning arresters, coax switches, things like that. They make the DXEE antenna, which is a fan dipole. It covers 10 and 15, and the third fan, third element of the fan, is a trapped dipole for 20 and 40. It's $160. Now, the advantage is it's only 40 feet long. It covers all of 2015 and the most used part of 10. The build quality is remarkably, remarkably sturdy. This is one tough antenna. And it has a lightning protector in it to short the antenna in the event of a nearby strike to help reduce the amount of uh, current that will be looking for ground uh, coming through the coax. Now, disadvantages, it's expensive for a wire antenna, and it does not cover all of uh, 40 meters. I originally thought this might be just what I wanted, but when I discovered it doesn't cover but half of the 40 meter band, that's when I backed off and looked for another alternative. Now, I've got here the last one, my antennas, um, it's uh, myantennasoneword.com. The NFED half wave for 80 through 10. That's the NFED half wave. So you feed it at one end. Now it's a single NFED wire antenna covering a small part of 80 meters plus 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Now I warn you that it does not cover any of those bands perfectly. First of all, the part on 80 is just 100 kilohertz or so. It'll cover like the digital portions. You can do the uh, digital work uh, down there or do CW. Uh, it will not cover the single sideband portion. Now there is another version of this, the NFED Halfwave 7510, that has uh, a little insert in the middle of it that makes it cover uh, the single sideband part at the upper end of 80 and then it covers those other bands too. Now this is $205 if you get the mounting plate. Uh, note that there is a 4010 available, but it's only $10 cheaper. And we'll need a tuner, to an external tuner, to tune the work bands, which are uh, the 30, 17, and 12. Now the advantage of this antenna is it's got many bands in one antenna, it's very easy to erect as an inverted V. In fact, if you look at the instructions, it kind of implies that that's how you should mount it. It makes a great NVIS antenna for 80 and 40. 
uh, the SWR across all the bands is, except 80, just a small portion, it's within three to one. So a modern rig can tune this with uh, its internal tuner. And I was surprised how sturdy the antenna is. It's very sturdy. I did buy it with the mounting plate. You can save a little money mounting it yourself, but then you're going to need your own mounting plate. The disadvantage, of course, is it's 165 feet long. Now, the way you tune this is by making the antenna shorter or longer. I ended up shortening it by two feet. Um, some people I've heard have shortened it up to five feet. Now, the thing is that when you change the tuning, you change it on all of the bands. So you have to be careful since you can't adjust the tuning just on one band. You have to get them on all the bands at once. So it's a pretty interesting antenna. And if you've got lots of space, this might be an interesting antenna. Uh, I have this antenna still mounted, although I've got my test coax right now on the 17754. So in summary here, why did I select the MFJ2010 as the reference station antenna? This is that off-center fed dipole. First of all, price. It's cheap. $70 plus shipping and tax or whatever. You can get this through DX Engineering or from HRO or direct from MFJ or whatever uh, your favorite dealer. It covers two of the most active bands and covers them fully, 40 and 20. It's already assembled. Uh, the tuning is pretty straightforward. You will have to probably adjust it a little bit, but it's very easy to adjust. And I think this antenna is just easier than the others. Yeah, 66 feet long, but I've got it uh, out in my backyard, uh, strung up between two uh, poles. One of the poles is made of those little military, um, uh, what are they, probably fiberglass for foot poles that fit into one another and the other end is made up of two pieces of 10 foot long chain link fence top rail uh, and it's just held up by nylon cord that goes to stakes pounded into the ground so there you have it that, those are the five different antennas that i looked at and here is the reasoning for selecting the mfj 2010. Well, there you go. That gives you a little bit of a background of how I evaluated the various antennas. Now, each of those antennas had good points and bad points. And it may be that one of those antennas is a better choice for you than the MFJ 2010. So take a look at all of them. They all work about the same, do about the same thing. Some take up more space, some take up less. It all depends on what's important to you. It may be that a horizontal wire antenna won't work for you at all. You have to go with the vertical. But in this case, we've looked at the wire antennas and why we picked the one we did. So please check out decastlercom support for various ways that you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.